Hey folks, I've been absent for a while, but thankfully the NX Core team has not. They've been working hard on our next major version that we're happy to release now, NX version 19. This is our first major version since NX Project Crystal landed in NX 18, and it marks a return to form of our regular cadence of releasing a major version every six months. Now there's a lot to get to inside of this release, so let's get started with our newest plugin, NX Gradle. Now, Emily, one of the engineers that works on our core team, made an entire blog post about this new plugin, and you can find it here. Now, this article will walk you through all the details as to what NX brings to a Gradle project, including how you would go about adding NX to an existing Gradle workspace, or how you might introduce Gradle into an existing NX workspace. With our new plugin, both of these things are pretty straightforward. We do go into more detail into adding NX for our Gradle workspace because there are some interesting things for introducing NX in a workspace where you don't have things like NPM readily available. But all of this is managed by our NX init script. Now, like most of our plugins, NX Gradle is going to come with what you would expect, generators to easily spin up new applications and projects inside of your workspace. And leveraging all the newest stuff from Project Crystal, we're going to automatically set up your project dependencies and your tasks based on the way your Gradle projects are set up using the native Gradle configuration. We also have a brand new Gradle tutorial available on our website where we're going to take the Java Spring framework guide for how to set up a multimodal project. And we're going to take that and add NX into it so you can see exactly what NX can bring to the table in terms of introducing NX to your Gradle workspaces. Now we are particularly excited for this project to go out because this marks the first plugin that we've released with the NX tag that is outside of the JavaScript ecosystem. We're actually using this plugin internally for our closed source projects, in particular for NX Cloud, and we're very proud of this plugin and what it represents. It's a step towards one of our larger goals, which is robust mono repo and full stack development support, even across language barriers. Up next, we have enhancements to the NX Atomizer. One of the cooler things about NX Project Crystal was the NX Atomizer. As you can see from the thumbnail here with Yuri ruthlessly slashing Cypress tests in half, the goal of the Atomizer is to take your end-to-end -end tests and automatically shard them without you having to think of how to split them up or to do anything manual there. And we're actually really proud of the results that the Atomizer has brought. It's saving us a lot of wall time on our own end-to-end -end tests, and our clients are also experiencing a lot of time savings as well. But one unfortunate side effect is the way we do this is we create a separate task for each one of the spec files that you have that include end-to-end -end tests inside of it. Now, primarily the problem we're facing is that for larger projects with a whole lot of end-to-end -end tests, it actually becomes entirely unreasonable for a human to be able to look at any kind of view that represents these tasks and make any kind of sense of them. Now, the time saving is still there. Our tool is working great. However, our goal is not only to save you time, it's also to give you the tools for you to be able to look at and understand your workspace properly. Towards this end, we've introduced the concept of task grouping now to NX. So the way this works is is when you run the command nx show project and then an example project here and to end angular with the dash dash web option you'll see this in your project view as we can see we have a set of tasks here however we can see that they're all under the umbrella of this e to e c i group and we've also added these enhancements to nx cloud we can see here that we have a view that shows us a top level view of all of the end to end groups that we have out there, but we can also drill down into one to see the different tasks that compose this larger group and see how each one of the subtasks here is progressing. Now, like we saw with the atomizer, this concept of task grouping is all done automatically for you. The same way that we're going out and grabbing all your spec files to create separate tasks for them is the same way we're going to then take those tasks and group them together so that inside of the project detail view and inside of NX Cloud, you'll be able to see them all grouped together. So for most projects, all you have to do is upgrade to NX version 19, and you should see these enhancements come out of the box simply from upgrading. All right, up next, we have more project view enhancements for targets. So in addition to introducing the concept of task grouping, we've also introduced the concept of technologies to tasks as well. This is pretty minor, but what it does is it allows us to put a little icon here, like we can see this playwright icon here inside of the project detail view to let you know easily and at a glance that this task is a playwright task. And we've done the same thing here to NX Cloud. Here we can see easily and at a glance that this task over here is a just task and right here that this is a Gradle task. Pretty straightforward, and same thing as with task grouping, you're gonna get this out of the box as soon as you upgrade to NX19. 
All right, next up is the new convert to infer generators for you to automatically migrate your projects to Project Crystal. Now we've prioritized this generator for the plugins that support atomization, in particular Cypress and Playwright. If you want to take your NX workspace and automatically opt into atomization, all you have to do is run the command NX generate convert to inferred. Before running this generator, we can see for this example project, the only task we had was ETE and lint. However, after running this generator, we can see that we still have our ETE and lint task. However, we also added this ETE CI task group. And inside of this group, we can see there's an individual task for each one of the playwright spec files that existed inside of my project. So by running this generator, you can automatically clean up all of your project.json files so you no longer have to manually maintain or configure any of the end-to-end -end tasks inside of your workspace. In addition, it's also going to set up atomization for you so that you can get those great time benefits inside of your CI pipelines. All right, next up we have a very important breaking change, which is that we are updating the bundled environment variables from nx underscore to nx underscore public underscore. So the way things worked before nx19, if you had any environment variable that was prefixed with nx underscore, we would actually include that into your built artifact. Now the idea for this is you could actually maintain multiple environments. For example, a development environment where your web app is pointed at services that are running locally on development servers. However, when you're ready to build your app for production, you would run a production build, which is set up to use your production environment so that your web app will now point to production services whenever it's making its network requests. Now, because of the nature of this change, we're actually not going to be providing you automatic migrations from the old prefix to the new prefix. So you're going to want to do this manually for any environment variable that you actually want to end up inside of your deployed artifact. So in addition to the features that we talked about, and almost all of them are related to Project Crystal in some way, we've also done quite a bit since NX18 to polish the features that we introduced with Project Crystal. You can find the full list of fixes and features from this major release inside of our chains logs on GitHub. Because Project Crystal has landed now, we're adjusting our priorities to make sure there's a higher importance placed on stability. You should see this reflected with the NX19. And in future cycles, we've also committed to continuing to reduce the total number of open GitHub issues and further increasing stability going forward. So the last major update we have for you is a new conference, Mono Repo World 2024. This conference will cover all things dealing with monorepos, and we're excited to host it at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, this October 7th. You can get your tickets now at a special early bird rate until May 31st, and as usual, online attendance is free. We also have a call for speakers open now, and that is going to be open until June 20th. I'm really looking forward to hopefully seeing a lot of y'all in Mountain View in October. So before we wrap up this release announcement, I just wanted to take a moment just to say personally from me, from Zach, thank you to everyone who reached out in kindness uh, over the last few months. I won't force the details on you here, but um, something happened in February. You can find out on Twitter everything that happened. But um, for me, this announcement represents the beginning of my return to NX and to the development community. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for your kindness that you invested in me. And I'm going to do everything I can to take that investment and just put it back out into the world. And here's to more hard work and more release updates and better days ahead. So thank you. I'll see you in the next one.